Hello everyone, I'm Darcy Bono and welcome to another painting session. In this video, we're going to be looking at making a ghostly green. Now I use this on all of my night hunts as you see here, and while there are some really great uh, nice pale misty greens on the Citadel paint app, I like this green because it's almost phosphorescent uh, ectoplasm colored green and it's super easy to achieve. So here's a quick look at our brushes. We're going to need a large layer brush or whatever you would normally use to apply a shade coat. And then we're going to need a large and a small dry brush. Now the brushes pictured here are in fact makeup brushes. The larger one's a concealer brush and the smaller is an eyeshadow brush. And if you haven't seen my video on why I love dry brushing with makeup brushes, definitely check that out. It's going to be in the video details uh, so you can look at that before this actual video starts if you like. Uh, it basically will give you a much smoother color transition and prevent your ghost from looking chalky or dusty. But if you don't have access to makeup brushes or you'd rather just stick with your ordinary dry brush, that is totally fine. You'll still be able to achieve the overall effect. And here are the paints we're going to be using today in the order that we're going to use them. We've got Moot Green, the new Citadel Hex Wraith Flame, Goss Blaster Green, and then a basic flat white. In this case, I'm using Vallejo Game Color Dead White. So here are two optional glaze paints that you can use to adjust the contrast of your ghostly green. You can use the blue glaze to increase depth of your ghost, or you can use the green glaze in any instance of over highlighting with white to kind of reduce that brightness back to a more subtle green tone. And finally, you're going to want to prime your model using a flat white. In this case, I've used Army Painter White, so that way the subsequent layers of green will also be nice and bright. So now that we've got our miniature all primed here, let's get to the first step of the painting process, which is just making a glaze out of mood green and a little bit of water. As you can see, I've just added one drop of water to one drop of mood green and mixed it until it's a somewhat runny, but not too watery consistency. You want it relatively opaque when you put it on your model. Unlike shade coats, glazes are meant to sit on top of the model and tint it rather than go entirely in the recesses. Now this will go in the recesses, but you also want it to make the white turn a very bright green like you see here. So all you're going to do is coat all of the ghostly bits in this bright green glaze. And for the sake of your time, I'm going to speed up this process. Once you've entirely coated your miniature and allowed it to dry, it should look something like this. And next we're going to be using Hex Wraith Flame to help cool down this neon green we've created. And just like in the first step, you're just going to be coating the entire model using Hex Wraith Flame. Now you'll notice that this paint is just a little more watery than the previous glaze that you made, so it's going to run into the recesses more. If you notice that it tends to pool, you can always just wipe off your brush, make sure it's nice and dry, and then wipe out some of the recesses if you notice that there's just too much um, in the deeper parts of the model. And once you've completely coated your ghost in hex ray flame, it'll look something like this. They look relatively radioactive, but we're gonna add Goss Blaster Green to help bring a bit of contrast and coolness to these ghosts. Using your large dry brush and starting at the tops or the tips of the ghostly wisps, you're gonna work your way down towards the face, lightly dry brushing back and forth, just like you normally would with any other dry brush. And you'll right away see that it gives you a great amount of contrast against the deeper, bolder green you created in the previous step. I generally will concentrate the brightest parts of this dry brushing on the tops, the faces, the fingers, and then the sword blades, if there is one on your ghost. I usually will just start at the tip of the sword and work my way down to the um, handle, and that way it gives it more of a realistic, almost a sheen to the blade itself, but still having your ghostly green. And to be perfectly honest, I forgot to take a post picture after finishing this dry brush. So we're going to jump right into the lighter dry brush using our flat white. This is actually the final step in the process, and you're just going to focus this bright white on the very tips and the edges you want most prominent looking. I will usually put this on just the tops like I did in the previous step, the face and the fingers again, but just a little bit lighter touch this time. You don't want it thoroughly coated, so be very selective on where you put it. 
And if at any point you feel like you've over highlighted, used too much white in a certain area, you can always use the green glaze I mentioned earlier to help tone it back down and reduce the high contrast. And after some light dry brushing, your ghost is now complete. If this looks good enough to you, you can stop here, and I thank you very much for watching. However, if you'd like to add a bit more depth of color to your ghostly green and really make it pop, stick around for the finishing touch. So in order to make the brightest parts pop, we're actually going to be darkening the recessed areas using Gilliman Blue Glaze. All this means is that we're going to apply a very, very thin coat of this glaze to all the deepest recesses on the model. Now when I say a very thin layer of glaze, I, I mean very thin. When you dip your paintbrush into the glaze, I want you to wipe up at least half of it off. You don't want it looking too blue in the recessed areas, otherwise it's going to really throw off the bright greens. And there you have it! After darkening the recessed areas and adding a bit of basing, this spirit host is ready to terrify the battlefield. Now if you have any questions or have any feedback for me at all, I'd love to hear from you. You can also shoot me a message on any of my social media pages listed in the video details. And I hope you found this tutorial useful. Until next time, happy painting everyone!